There's several ways in, in, uh, where you can be a success at research, to be quite honest. I, I sometimes use a, a military metaphor. You know, um, so uh, let's say that this is your forces here, and you have the enemy here, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you can um, act like um, a guerrilla warfare. You can be parachuted in here to try and discover something new. And frankly, this is probably very dangerous, you know? But if it works, it's fantastically successful, okay? A second sort of project is where um, you don't parachute into the very front, but you move a battalion or a, a regiment out to attack a, a particular problem where the parachutists have found out what the problem is. So you're near the front, but just behind it. Often the most productive workers are like that, but they're never quite at the front. What they do is they keep an eye on the journals, they see an area that's moving, and then they move all their resources into it. Okay, that's the second thing. Then the third is behind, a bit more like trench warfare, you know, you, where you move whole regiments and armies to attack a problem which has been well described, but where there's lots of details to be discovered. Okay, and the truth is all three of these um, are needed. All three of these are needed. The Nobel laureates you're talking to like to be out here, okay, where there's constant failure. The people who are often successful are those who are just behind, but often they find themselves competing with each other because everybody knows what's out there and it's just a question of who moves the fastest. The ones coming up behind just sort everything out and that's needed too because quite often these people in the middle make mistakes. They're having to move fast and they want to get their papers out and sell will accept them and sign, you know, because it's sexy and trendy and they make mistakes and then you need the army behind to sort it out. 